Um, so I guess what we'll do is just kind of walk you through the set uh, piece by piece. As long as we've all been in this project, this has been Dick's baby from the get-go. I came out here and began to find out who Molly Brown really was. And when I found out who she really was, I thought this is the perfect story to tell this way. And it's a big American story. Well, like many others, I was familiar with the movie. I didn't see the stage play of Molly Brown. And when I got Dick's script, it was just a brand new script. It's inspired by the original script. To call it a revival is a gross understatement. It's very much about two people who can't live with each other, can't live without each other. And I think Meredith Wilson's music and score is Americana at its best. You know, sort of big and strong and open-hearted and, and optimistic. And I think that that's a lot of qualities that this show has and that Molly Brown herself has. It is a journey of a woman who grows uh, incredibly. So you need somebody who can take you on that journey. You can believe that she is a kind of young and open and somewhat naive, but very clear-headed and strong-willed person. I know this kind of person. I know a, a self-sufficient, unafraid, passionate mountain woman. The story is so tellable. The mining strike and everything that happened and their, their overnight fame and the downfall and the problems that came from that. I mean, it's just great storytelling. Right now we're working on The Unsinkable Molly Brown. It's been going well. It's a very challenging show because there's a lot of big pieces. Um, one thing that's different about this show for this year is that it's an enhanced production. So the production values are slightly higher, the set's a little bigger. Um, there's a lot going on. We have a lot of moving pieces, a lot of big pieces in this particular set. The one in particular is the ice sculpture that's over here. One of the great things about theater is you're always doing new things. And this was one of those times where we were building something that no one here had ever done before. Everyone had done bits and pieces of it, but never put a project together like this. So a lot of research and development went into this. This is a really cool combination of 2D and 3D stuff. There's several layers of um, different types of materials, foam core, plastics, that were cut to give different uh, variations of thickness to simulate these building structures. We have this piece here. It was printed on the MakerBot downstairs in the design studio. And what's done is a 3D model is imported into the MakerBot software, and then the MakerBot spits it out with this plastic medium, which comes out a nozzle, and then it just moves like a printer, but in three dimensions. One of the cool things about doing a musical is there's always a lot of movement. The challenge has been, of course, figuring out how things move, how they store backstage, something people don't think about. We're on stage for Molly Brown. In this show, we have several things that move, and on the stage we have three automation tracks. One of the units that rides on this downstage track is this mine shaft, which is used for several of the scenes. We're on the proscenium side, down on the thrust side, there are three elevators. The doors are pneumatically activated, so they open and close, and then there's an elevator that actually comes up, and that's hydraulic. So these are the underside of the elevators. We figured out today that actually could hold about 1,200 pounds. The very first scene is eight performers coming up for the lifeboat scene, top of the show. Lights is run by someone, sound is run by someone, automation is run by someone, the flying scenery is run by a couple people on the what we call the pin rail where the ropes are, so it's a big team effort for sure. And starting out designing the costumes for Molly Brown, when you're faced with reinterpreting a life through a musical, the question of accuracy and taste and color and what might have been as opposed to what will help to support the way that the piece is written needs to be taken into consideration. If there really was a San Nicola, what would you ask for? And don't say Denver. <laughs> a red silk dress. There's just a lot to it. All of this is cut apart individually and then put back on and stitched into the pattern that we want. So everything will be individually stitched, all of this will be cut away so that it looks like it's all part of the gown like this. This will hold up really well. It's not like a one time wear it to a ball kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We do have to build a sort of replica Titanic life vests. We've got the specs actually on a, on a real life vest from the Titanic, so we're going to try and recreate it. This is a Molly hat. She's got quite a few hats. So when it's finished, it's going to sit sort of at that angle. And then of course, tons more stuff, feathers and flowers. Definitely there were some theatrical liberties that I took <laughs> in uh, reinterpreting Margaret Brown or Molly Brown. And we hold to the periods definitely because you know you're looking at the 
grand span of years of a person's life. So that I think is very important. With that, you know, I think that it's just about being as consistent as possible so that the audience can follow the story and feel that it's being told honestly. To do this story about Molly Brown in what became her hometown and one of the most famous residents in Denver history is kind of wonderful.